Hey guys, still there. Yet another submarine addition. Again, completely optional. You don't have to build it on your submarine, but it can be handy. This one is going to be about cruise missiles or medium to long range missiles. Now, for this to work, I'm going to have to make a slight adjustment to my submarine because in one of the previous videos I added the anti-torpedo systems. And while the systems can still work, I don't really have the capability of adding another compartment behind this one if it fires torpedoes or it fires those decoys towards the rear. So that is not what I want to have. And for that I'm going to completely close off this section. And there we go. So that's no longer an issue. Let's add some lead blocks in the back. The rest is going to be metal. Once again, paint scheme, uh, not a problem. I'll be working on that later. Okay, medium to long range cruise missiles. You can make these things as big as your sub is. Um, you can even make them bigger, but I prefer to keep them more or less inside the hull like this. I've rounded up my hull a bit more with this um, diagonal block. And this means that if you have missiles along your center line, you can make them even higher. But I prefer that my sub to be um, not too big. And these missiles, for me, are going to only have a specific target, which is either slow-moving units or land targets. Let's say you want to use this submarine in the campaign. You want to have some way of actually reaching out and touching targets ashore. And that's something that we currently don't have. So let's make sure that that submarine can also tackle that threat. I'm going to make it a six missile battery, so I'm going to be adding three launch pads. And to the outer edge of the launch pad, I'm going to be adding ejector add-ons. These things are missiles they need to get to the surface quickly so they can start to do what they are out to do. Before they reach the surface, they won't actually fire. They won't fire up their thruster. Let's add some connectors and start adding gantries. Whoops, turn them around. Now, a missile of three blocks is not very sizable, and you can go with four. In my situation, that will cause some protruding from the hull. Um, I don't particularly mind, but you could go with three, although you're going to be limited in firepower. Let's add a missile controller. And then for the missiles themselves, I set them up to only hit slow, small targets, or slow, um, not very maneuverable targets. I'm going to go with a variable thruster, because I don't need the speed of a short-range thruster, especially if I'm bombarding targets ashore. I'm going to set this to 400, so the thrust per second is only very low. Two fuel tanks, one fins, one explosive warhead, and one activator seeker. And that can be enough. You don't need much more. What I would like to have is, once again, an IFF, in case I am going to be using the submarine around friendlies. And what would also be handy is to have another block so I can add a staggered fire add-on or two. Have these things fire with one missile in between, or one second in between. And that should leave me with enough room here. Or, well, it should, but I'm afraid it won't. For a local weapons controller, but I don't think it's going to fit in this situation. Let's go with that one first. Uh, local weapons controller. Let's add a wireless receiver. And considering I'm going to flat on uh, or top off the hull right there, I'm not going to be adding any more to that. Local weapons controller, maximum speed to engage is 10. Anything above this speed will be ignored. So faster moving ships that might be harder to hit, I'm going to ignore. And this thing is mainly used for shore bombardment. Maximum range will be about 1500. I won't need much more. Minimum range, none. Or actually minimum range, let's set that to about 200 because otherwise the missile won't have enough time to turn and reach the surface. Minimum altitude to engage, um, no limit. Although we could actually set this to zero or this thing might consider engaging submarines. Maximum altitude to engage. I don't mind if this thing goes after air targets. That's okay. So long as it's not a fast air target, I can probably take it down. Especially considering that the head that I'm using is an active radar seeker instead of an IR seeker, so it won't get distracted. 
Now, unfortunately, this doesn't give me a lot of room for the add-ons that I want, so I'm going to make this compartment a bit longer. And I could actually add a few more missiles to that while I'm at it. There's the stagger fire add-ons that I've always wanted. Uh, you know what, let's make it an, oops, let's make it an 8 missile battery. Let's make sure they are all the same type. There we go. And the additional room that I have over here, I'm going to be using for additional ammo storage. Because I found that the 2500 points of ammo that I have on the ship currently tends to not be enough. It tends to start to run out quite soon. Um, let's go with this and then add another layer of metal around it. Because, as you know, ammo crates tend to behave violently when shot at. Not what I want to have happen on my sub. Metal beams to top it off. Um, a metal beam there, another metal beam there, and there's my missile battery. Then go for a propeller, large propeller. It should be a primary system. Output set to 100. Once again, at the rudder, because once again I made my sub longer. Set propulsion to somewhat medium. Now, unfortunately, there's not really any shore nearby, but I could spawn in an installation. Let's see if that works. Let's spawn in an installation from the Deepwater Guard, if they have any, which they really don't. There it is, buildings. Or installations. Um, let's go with the fishing hole. Something cheap and simple. Where is it? Oh, that's way too far away. 2400 meters. Let's start turning that way. You can see that this submarine that started out pretty much at this size, I think. This should be the engine compartment. That was the rear of the ship. Or, no, this was. And now it's gotten quite a bit longer with all the additions that I've made to it. This means that you may need to consider balancing it out, out again. Otherwise, the sub will behave slightly unpredictably. And keep in mind that you may need to move your um, hydrofoils in order to keep it stable. Closing in on the target. I wonder if I can see it yet. Oh, no, sorry, that's a buoy. Never mind. Torpedoes are definitely already firing. They don't have a maximum range, I think. And once this buoy was airborne, I could actually see the target. And the torpedoes thought, hey, it's in range, so let's hit it. 2,000 meters out. Let's manually fire these missiles and see if they have the required range. Where's the missile controller? There it is. Set this to control group 4. There's the missile getting pulsed out and seeking random block of fishing hole. There we go. Now you can see it's not a particularly fast missile. Forward velocity is only 93. And I'm doing this to make sure that it has a decent range. A couple of missiles going in. Explosive charge is really, really very light on this thing. But let's see if it does any damage. Yeah, not particularly much, but that's not the problem. Because shore targets will most likely not even be able to return fire. So if I can just keep firing, then I'm perfectly happy with that. Let's see if these things are getting ready to fire. We're still too far away. Yep, 1,600 meters out. The maximum range that we set for this thing was 1,500, and I think we can go with a bit more, considering they had a bit of fuel left. Let's go with uh, 1,700. They're not firing for some reason. My torpedoes are, though. Why are my weapons not firing? There we go. Weapons are firing. They are taking a while to turn, but they are actually getting the turn right. Closing in on the target. Now, as mentioned before, their explosive power 
or their offensive power, whatever you want to call it, is really, really low. If you have a bigger submarine, you can make this thing quite a bit more lethal. I'm actually not sure how this thing... Whoa! How this thing has managed to fight my position. I don't particularly like it. I don't like getting shot at. What is detecting my sub? Because it sure as hell isn't the radar. Nor any of the other systems. But they're definitely trying to kill me. I'm doing a decent job at it, too. Ooh, looks like I got hit there. Yep, I lost some on the port side of the ship. Otherwise, fine. Continue to dive. Anyway, this is basically it. Make sure that you have a short, or that you change the short range thruster for a variable thruster. And set that variable thruster to fire at a speed that's not particularly high. You don't need all that speed if it's only a target that's not moving very quickly. Now let's see if this thing will also work against an airship. And I think it actually will. Let's say we're going to have a Atlas as a target. There it is. Looks like some of the missiles are immediately changing course and already impacting the Atlas. Which took a bit of damage, but nothing too serious. Missiles are going in, and yep, they are impacting the airship. Now if you're dealing with an airborne threat, I would recommend that you go for something else. I would recommend that you go for uh, fragmentation warheads. And talking of frag warheads, my AA missiles should start kicking in soon-ish, depending on the range, which is currently set to 700. Let's turn this into a uh, slightly more extensive missile fight. Turn the sub around. I'm going to tell it to dive a bit more. I'm going to try and close on that Atlas. But you can see the cruise missiles are also doing their damage. Albeit, not that much. But, keep this in mind, once that airship manages to dive, or manages to get into the water, it's mine. If my torpedoes can hit it, that thing is completely done. As my torpedoes are still the main weapon system. Looks like I got hit by something for quite a lot of damage there. And there we go. My cruise missiles have knocked off enough propulsion or balloons off of the Atlas that it is now in the water. And I gotta tell you, that is bad news for it. Because now, it's playing on my level. Literally. Now, it is playing in the water where my torpedoes can hit it. Let's see if the torpedoes are closing in. Now, with the sub listing quite a lot, it's getting quite difficult to control the camera as well. I see some torpedoes heading off in a completely different direction. The ship is having a lot of difficulty trying to keep itself steady without propulsion. And it's just my repair bot actually repairing it, not even my uh, other repair systems. Anyway, you get the gist of it. Cruise missiles help. You can also set these things to engage surface threats. Just keep in mind that surface threats are usually weaker at the bottom. And that my torpedoes, or your torpedoes, will likely be able to mo do more damage. And these things can be a very, very worthy addition if you're dealing with uh, structures ashore that your other systems cannot possibly hit. So that's why I have these things on. But let me know what you're using them for in the comments, and I'm looking forward to seeing that. Thank you for watching. I hope that this addition was a useful addition to your sub. If it was, give the video a like. Otherwise, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. And thank you for yet another video from the depths. See you soon for more. And if you have any specific additions that you would like me to make to the submarine, feel free to ask. I'm always happy to see what you guys want me to do and then try and come up with a design that will do just that. Once again, thank you for watching. See you soon for more videos.